Oh man, I'm glad to be here. I'm, I've, I've been traveling a lot, so I've been. I'm. I'm, I'm a little. You know how you. You know what I mean. I, get, I gotta get get back up and, and get up to Sacramento because it's not hot enough here today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to be in, in a church though tonight. I'm glad to be in a church. You know, because. You know, when you're on the road, you don't you don't get to church as often as you'd like to, because sometimes you're traveling on Sunday or, or, or whatever. And 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 I miss you know being at my church. You know, I, I miss just having like just just hearing some spirituals or something. You know what I mean? Pass me now, oh gentle Savior. A... I I like to go and sit in the same section every Sunday, because there's a guy that sits in that section where I sit. And he sings every song wrong. <laughs> no, but he sings it out loud, you know, with full of feeling. Oh, maize and grapes. <laughs> and somebody had him a hymnal. <laughs> every Sunday is the same thing. But I'm glad to be here, man. I've been traveling a lot, I'm traveling too much. I, I've been traveling down south a lot, and uh, tell you folks, the south is alive and backwards. <laughs> so love being in California. Yeah, I was in Missouri. Missouri is pawning themselves off as being Midwest. It's the South. <laughs> they, they had me fooled, though. They flew me into Kansas City, and Kansas City is a metropolis. You know, lots of nightlife, arts and culture, great restaurants, a lot of fun people, but uh, pretty much the South. They picked me up at the airport, drove me two and a half hours into the woods. There was black people there, didn't even know they were free. Hey, this, this is the South right here. Don't you tell no jokes about Massa. Come on out of there, Kunta, you're free. I was in a small little town uh, in, in, in Missouri. I was doing a show for, for 200 pastors in Sedalia, Missouri. Uh, tiny little town, three teeth in the whole town. <laughs> the mayor had him on his bracelet. <laughs> First night on stage, you know, I come out, I said, I said, I said, where's all the black folks at? Somebody said, on stage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> I said, I'm glad to be here in Missouri. Somebody said, we say Missouri. I said, you say it wrong. <laughs> Apparently not as smart as your friends over in Mississippi. Because <laughs> that bookmobile doesn't get to Missouri that often. And suffice it to say that Missouri is home of the big girl. They fancy the biscuits. <laughs> Here in California, we have the most beautiful women in the world, bar none. Look around the room, fellas. Look at the women you brought with you. Give them and give them a round of applause because they are fluffy year round in Missouri. <laughs> Guys, if you like them fluffy and you're single, you might, Missouri might be the spot for you. You can get yourself a sack of biscuits and hang out at the park. They'll follow you to your car like pigeons. <laughs> I realize I'm a big guy. I was a little guy in Missouri. <laughs> People were coming up to me going, how you doing, little man? <laughs> uh, pretty good, ma'am. <laughs> nice tooth. <laughs> I ate terribly in Missouri. Everything was fried. You ever go someplace and no matter what you order, they put something fried on the plate, whether you order it or not? Every meal was like that. I ate so much grease in Missouri, I drink a glass of water, it beads up in my throat. <laughs> I did find one thing fried that I loved, fried candy bars. <laughs> Somebody took a candy bar, wrapped that in cinnamon roll dough, and chucked it in the fryer. <laughs> Who was I to say no? Of course, after about that fourth or fifth one, my heart started double clutching. I'm, <laughs> I'm down on one knee at the fair sweating butter. People are coming up, not even trying to help me. They're dabbing their biscuits on my forehead. Hey, there's a butter fountain over here. Bring grandma.
I got home, I figured I better get myself together, you know, go see my doctor. My doctor says that I'm an anomaly to him, says that most people retain water. It appears I'm retaining meat. <laughs> and, and I understand it. My mother's from Louisiana, so I grew up with meat at every meal. Anybody else like that? Every meal. My mother give you a whole ham for a snack. <laughs> she say, baby, dinner won't be ready for about an hour. Take this ham. <laughs> I'm four years old, dragging a 40-pound ham around the house. So now I'm trying to get myself together, trying to get back down to my fighting weight, you know. I don't want to lose too much weight, though. I don't want to be that guy that loses like 100 pounds, and then he's at work bragging about it all the time. You ever, anybody know that guy? But he's still got that big jack-in-the-box head. Like, you know I lost over half my body weight. Oh, well, you go, <laughs> you lost too much. You're going to have a hard time finding hats. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to lose my love handles either. Because they've been with me for, you know, through thick and, and thicker. <laughs> like an old friend, you don't want to just kick them to the curb, you know what I mean? You know, you can squeeze love out of your love handles. You ever get cut off on the freeway and, and that, little, that little bad mouth guy and you want to jump out and say, Wait, you, I, I, you go. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus loves you and your fancy lane change. You can't, do, you can't do that when you're skinny. You got to stick your finger in your belly button. <laughs> and you spend the rest of the day trying not to smell it. <laughs> what? You don't wash your belly buttons? Mine smells like hamburgers. <laughs> hey, get a whiff of this. As I'm trying to get myself together, man, they say, they say in order, you, you, I, need to work, I need to work out, I need to get on a diet. I, I can't diet. I can't do it. I'm like one day on, two, three, four days off. If at first you don't succeed, have another fried candy bar, hope for the best. That's my motto. <laughs> you, you all right? <laughs> that wasn't even like a real word. That was just, I know you! <laughs> like somebody got a noggin stabilizer for her, a, a helmet or something? <laughs> oh man! I, I, here's the thing: they, they say in order for you to maximize the potential of your diet, you got to work out. I started working out at a new gym. You might have heard of it, Curves. <laughs> well, that's a good gym. First day, they give you a personal trainer. She stood me in front of a full-length mirror. She says, Mark, we're going to identify your trouble spots. <laughs> I see it every day. It's all trouble. I said, if you really want to identify my trouble spots, shouldn't we be looking at my refrigerator? That's where the trouble starts. <laughs> Told me she was going to introduce me to muscle confusion. I hadn't worked out in two years when I started working out at the Curves. I said, my muscles are confused because I'm here. They're going, where's the couch? She's a good trainer, too. This is the best trainer I've ever had. I played sports all my life from the time I was a little kid throughout college. This is how good this trainer at the curves is. First six weeks, my chest went from an A to a C cup. <laughs> That's a good trainer right there. got to the gym one day, she told me, she says, Mark, today we're going to bench press. And, and I'm a man. Did I mention that? <laughs> you say to a man, today we're going to bench press. We swell right up, don't we, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Voice get all deep. Yeah. <laughs> Let's bench press. She grabbed two tens and put one on each side of the bar. I said, girl, you better get out of here with that. Hey, get, get four of those 45s from over there and put them on this side of the bar. I'm going to put four 45s on this side of the bar. We're going to bench press like a man. Right here in the curves. <laughs> so we loaded the bar up. It had that arc in it. You ever see that dude at the gym lifting all the weights? You can't go home. He got your car up there. So I get down on the bench, I put my hands on the bar, and when you start bench pressing, you can't just put your hands wheelie-neely anywhere on the bar. Am I right, guys? No, no, Got to make sure you're no, no, no. symmetrical. Am I right? <laughs> 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 
After about 15 minutes of that, I was like, "Woo! <laughs> this is a tough workout you got going right here. This is that muscle confusion you were talking about. I'm confused. Finally, I got down. I threw the weight right up. Bam! Gravity is a funny thing. The weight came down so fast it made a whistling sound. Woo! I tried to bounce it off my chest. You know, you get that little, that little, just that little. It sunk deeper into my chest. Every time I moved, it was like quicksand. I was like, oh no! I felt like I was about to pass out, but you can't pass out at the curve. Your woman's gonna be embarrassed. So I did what every guy in here should do. If you find yourself in that situation, I let out just a little bit of pee. <laughs> Not enough to be construed as I peed on myself, just a squirt. <laughs> to help take the edge off the pain. You know what I'm saying? Just a splash. <laughs> so I could think what to do next. A, a spritz. <laughs> so I could get a moment of clarity. Once you get that clarity, your mind will tell you what to do. Roll it down. Get it down to your waist. You can sit right up. Blame it on her, right? You're supposed to be spotting me. You know I ain't worked out in two years. Where are those tens? I was working out at the Curves one night, right? I was working out hard, right? I'm, I'm really trying to get myself together. So I'm, I'm putting in the work. I'm sweating the I go home to shower because they don't let me shower at the curves no more. <laughs> and I get in the shower and, and, and I slip and I broke my back. True story, crushed my T11. Get you some sticky stuff in your tub. You know what I'm saying? The, the mats, the, 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 the stripes, the geometrical shapes, something, some sand to stop you from slipping and sliding. It's dangerous to bathe is what I'm trying to say. This particular day, I, see, I like to be clean, right? I use a whole bar of soap when I shower. I look like a snowman in the shower, if you can picture that. <laughs> and this particular day, I'm all snowmaned up, and I turn to let the water hit me in the face, like I had done so many times before, without incident. And all of a sudden, shoo, I was airborne. Let me tell you something, when you 250 some odd pounds and you are suddenly four feet off the ground floating out of the shower, <laughs> it's a frightening situation. I needed some clarity, I needed it now. I let out a little pee. <laughs> Finally that clarity kicked in for me. Hey, we had a shampoo. <laughs> this grout's got a little mold in it. I might have to get some CLR for that. Is this a new shower curtain? I don't remember buying a new shower curtain. And then I hit the floor. Blah! Now I'm laying there on the floor, naked snowman, pee in his eye. <laughs> and I got two cats. Cats do not respect your personal space. The cats kicked the door in. One of them is sitting right on my chest, looking me right in the grill. <laughs> Judging. <laughs> he said, what you doing down here? Which really freaked me out. I thought I was dead. I didn't know he could talk. <laughs> I had him for two years. He hadn't said a word. I said, if you talked two years ago, we'd have a whole new house. Now I've got all kinds of equipment to shower with. I got a Velcro in my shower. I got these little booties that stick to the Velcro. I got those old man bars in there. I got a system of bungee cords and a harness. I wear a helmet and a mouthpiece. I'm not even allowed to shower alone anymore. In fact, I thought I was going to be late to this show. I was on the phone talking to my mother. I said, Mama, I got to go. I said, I got to hop in the shower. She said, by yourself? So you better get Bill Nye or somebody to help you into that. And, and <laughs> oh, man. You guys are a lot of fun. My name is Mark Christopher Lawrence. I'm originally from Compton, California. <laughs> Home of the drive-by shooting. 
one of the many cities in America where the cost of living is going up, chance of living is going down. <laughs> I grew up in Compton during the height of the rise of the Bloods and the Crips. I lived in a red neighborhood, went to school in a blue neighborhood. It was tough getting to and from school. This is how tough it was in Compton. Any, any given day, you can walk down the street and see a cat swinging a Rottweiler by the tail. <laughs> That's how tough it was. I decided one day, I got to join me a gang. I don't need to get beat up going both ways. So this particular day, I left school at like 11 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to join me a gang. I got into a gang. You know, I got home. I left school at 11. It took me till 6 o'clock at night to get home. You know, I had my hat off to the side like the gangsters wear. I had my pants hanging down, sagging like the gangsters do. I had my stroll together. You know how the gangsters walk out. <laughs> Took me till 6 o'clock to get on. It's really hard to walk with your pants down there like that. <laughs> Every three or four steps, you got to stop and go. <laughs> I got home. My mother was on the phone talking to her friend. Good God-fearing woman, my mother. Hold on a minute, girl. I'm going to have to call you back. This boy here done lost his mind. She said, why are you dressed like that? I said, I'm in a gang, mama. <laughs> Two weeks later, when I came to... She was sitting right next to my hospital bedside. <laughs> when they woke me up, up from that coma she had put me in, she said, let me tell you something. I'm your gang leader. <laughs> I got jumped in that day. <laughs> Apparently, I'm still in. If I don't call her every couple of days, she calls me and leaves messages. It's your mama. I think you know the number. Click. <laughs> no matter what I'm doing, I stop. I got to go call my mama. I could be in the middle of a joke. This phone ring with her number on it. Hold on a minute, y'all. I got to call my mama. She believed in discipline. By a round of applause. How many of you have children? Spankings are timeouts. <laughs> well, no timeouts when I was growing up. You, you get whooped so long, you try to call a timeout. Oh, mama, I'm in, I'm in, please, please, oh, mama, please, please, mama, mama, I won't do it no more. Oh. I was trying to call a timeout. I saw a kid the other day over at Nordstrom Racky. He was inside one of those round things that the shirts hang on. He was shooting shirts out the top. Looked like a volcano erupting in the store. A crowd was forming. His father was going, Timmy, come on, buddy. You're embarrassing me. As I passed by, I said, hey, man, the belts are right there. My mother would have had two. <laughs> I'd have been jumping double dutch right there in the store. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man. You guys are a lot of fun. A lot of good-looking people in here tonight. Good looking. It's, 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 it's nice to see good-looking people, especially right down front. I did a show the other night. It was a room full of ugly folks. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> Fresno. Spent a whole year in Fresno one night. There was a guy sitting down front. He had an eye here and one here. They blinked at different times. <laughs> You guys, are, you guys are good. You guys are good. Good looking folks. You know, I usually talk about relationships and stuff, but I don't have enough time tonight. So I'm going to leave you with one thing. You know, one thing about women. You know, women, you, you are complicated. 
extremely complicated. <laughs> See, men, we are simple. We are, we are, you know, we're the kind of people. We hands-on, touch, feel, taste. That's who we are. <laughs> you know, women, you are complicated, you know. And you've been complicated a long time. Here's how I know. The Bible says, on the sixth day, God laid Adam down, put him in a deep coma-like sleep, yanked the rib out of his side, formed woman, blew the breath of life into her. And then God needed a break. In fact, he stopped creating after that. <laughs> All the angels is running around. What about that duckbill platypus? You gonna fix that? Nah, that's good. <laughs> you could hear Eve in the black background <laughs> complaining about everything, criticizing. You know, why is the giraffe next so long? How come they have a pot of us underwater? <laughs> Finally, God woke Adam up. He said, hey, um, good luck with that. <laughs> My name is Mark Christopher Lawrence, folks. Enjoy the rest of the show.